Hi, micro folks. So again, this is 2020 spring um, semester. The campus is now closed because of the coronavirus pandemic. So we're trying to do some lab videos um, so we can stay caught up uh, with the hope that I'm hoping that in a few weeks we might reopen campus so we can get back together again. All right, folks, so we're doing the lab manual chapter 10 and um, we did an intro video. We did a video on um, doing the airborne microbe experiment and that experiment's still running right here. So I have my, my um, 30 minute plates and 60 minute plates are exposed. <clears throat> so I thought we would discuss in a little bit more detail selective and di differential media. And again, this information is in your um, lab manual. There's some tables in your lab manual that give you a good description of the different types of media <clears throat> and the components of our selective and differential media. So let's see here, what shall we start with? Let's start with, oh, we'll just do a quick review, you guys. So remember, triptych soy auger is considered all purpose, will grow a wide range of bacteria and fungi. The Sabrose dextrose is selective for fungi, so we, we would expect yeasts and molds to grow. Um, what we'll what we'll next talk about you guys in a little bit more detail is blood auger, and sorry about the reflection here. The blood auger you will recall is called enrichment media. This will grow a wide wide range of microbes, including fastidious bacterial pathogens that need lots and lots of preformed organic. Um, molecules. So what we'll now discuss is how not only is blood auger enrichment, but it's also differential based on hemolysis. So hemolysis um, is the lysis of red blood cells. Um, and since our blood auger has red blood cells in it, um, we'll see three different types of hemolysis. And oh gosh, I don't know if this is going to be that great, but we'll see if we can use this. And again, folks, we'll do a PowerPoint, so we'll have better images on the PowerPoint. So there's three types of hemolysis, and this was a really cool plate um, that was in the ASM, um, American Society for Microbiology Microbe Library. And what they did, this is a blood plate, and they've taken three different types of bacteria, and they've inoculated the bacteria um, it, um, using the Greek alphabets for the type of hemolysis. So here we have what's called alpha hemolysis. It's a darkening, a greening of the blood auger. Um, it's often referred to as incomplete hemolysis, um, meaning the red blood cells are broken open, but the contents aren't totally destroyed, and we get this greenish discoloration. This one, it's a little bit hard to interpret this, folks. This is called beta hemolysis, and if this was an actual plate, we would see that the blood auger is totally transparent. It's like glass. We could hold the plate up to the light, and light would just come streaming through. If we held the zone of beta hemolysis over um, print, we could read through it. So this is beta hemolysis, complete and total destruction of the red blood cells and their contents. And then down here, you guys, this is really hard to see. This is called gamma hemolysis, and it's no hemolysis. Why they had to call it gamma hemolysis, I don't know. But most microbes are going to be gamma hemolytic. Um, being able to do alpha or beta hemolysis is rather unusual in the microbial world. <clears throat> The reason that um, the type of hemolysis can be helpful is it lets us differentiate between potential pathogens. So as an example, folks, if we start out with alpha hemolysis, um, we'll just name some uh, gram-positive bacterial pathogens that are alpha hemolytic. So one of them would be Streptococcus mutans, which lives in our mouth. They form biofilms on our teeth. Um, and so what we'll, what we'll do as part of our experiment, I'm not sure if it'll be this, this video or the next one, we'll actually do um, uh, a gum swab and we'll do a throat swab and we'll do a nasal swab and transfer them to our blood auger incubate and then see what kind of hemolysis we get. Um, from the gum, gum swab, we should recover Streptococcus mutans and thus we should see some colonies that have this kind of darkish greenish discoloration on our blood auger. Another really important gram-positive bacterial pathogen that causes pneumonia is Streptococcus pneumonia and it too is alpha hemolytic. If we move over to beta hemolysis, there's three gram-positive bacterial pathogens I'd like you to know that are beta hemolytic. Um, the first one would be good old Staphylococcus aureus. 
So, um, for example, if we take a nasal swab, um, maybe 15, 20% of us carry staph Staphylococcus aureus in our nose. If on the nasal swab there's Staph aureus, we're going to transfer it to blood auger, incubate it, and if st Staph aureus is present, we would expect to see complete total hemolysis, beta hemolysis. Two members of the genus Streptococcus are also beta hemolytic. Streptococcus pyogenes, which causes strep throat, the sore throat. Um, if we did a throat swab and um, transferred it to blood auger, if Streptococcus pyogenes was present, it would cause beta hemolysis. Another important member of the um, genus Streptococcus that's a pathogen um, is the so-called group B Streptococcus. The scientific name is Streptococcus agalactia. Um, most, most folks in the medical field won't know it by its scientific name, they'll refer to it as group B strep. Group B strep can colonize the vaginal mucosa of pregnant women and the problem is if, um, if the pregnant mom delivers vaginally, her baby can become infected with the group B strep. And in some babies, the group B strep can cause neonatal sepsis and meningitis. And in some tragic cases, can actually kill the baby. This is, I guess we, we could say it's, it's an emerging infectious disease. Um, for example, in my parents' generation, your grandparents, great-grandparents generation, probably it wasn't a problem, or at least we hadn't identified it. But now that we're aware that it is a significant cause of neonatal death, usually when um, mom is pregnant, um, they'll do a vaginal swab to see if she's colonized with group B strep. The good, the good news is that group B strep usually are easily killed with antibiotics. Just your good old beta-lactams will kill it. So by... Um, being aware that mom's colonized with group B strep, maybe can give be given antibiotics um, before delivery, maybe even during delivery, just to make sure the baby doesn't get harmed. So again, folks, the three beta hemolytic um, gram-positive bacterial pathogens to know, Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pyogenes, also known as group A Streptococcus, and then our group B Streptococcus, the Streptococcus agalactia. And then, folks, um, most microbes, as we said, don't cause hemolysis, so most microbes we would call uh, gamma hemolytic. Okay. And I just have some more photographs here that Dr. Holland um, printed out, just some new, um, different perspectives. So folks, this on, oops, <laughs> on, uh -huh. on the right hand, oops, <laughs> it's my right, <laughs> your left, um, this would be, this dark, dark green darkening of the blood auger. What kind of hemolysis is that? So this one is the alpha hemolysis and can you name two gram-positive bacterial pathogens that are alpha hemolytic? So it would be Streptococcus mutans. It can cause plaque, dental, cari dental caries, cavities, increase the risk for periodontal disease. And if we have somebody that we think is suffering with pneumonia and we got a sputum sample and we plated it, um, a, another pathogen is Streptococcus pneumonia, is alpha, also alpha hemolytic. Um, over here we have beta hemolysis. Um, so just as an example, folks, maybe if this was um, pus from an infected surgical site and we played it and we see beta hemolysis, we're really worried about it could be Staphylococcus aureus. If somebody has a sore throat, we do a throat swab played it and we see beta hemolysis, we're going to be thinking about streptococcus pyogenes, the group A streptococcus. If this is a pregnant mom and we do a vaginal swab and plane it to blood auger and after incubation we see beta hemolytic colonies, we're going to be really worried about group B strep, the streptococcus agalactia. Okay folks, I think what I'm going to do is just stop this here. So we'll try to make these short.